Hello, fairy friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Winks Forever podcast. I am your host, Lola Valentine. Um, this week, we are continuing our episode rewatch of Winx Club season one with episode seven. And I'm super excited to dive into this episode because gosh, it's just so nostalgic for me recounting the events of this episode because I mean, this season one DVD was one of the first Winx Club DVDs that I ever got as a kid. And I watched the stew out of this. I watched this DVD so, so much that it's got some, even like around like the, like the middle of the disc, like it's got a little like cracked parts in the plastic (laughs) that holds the DVD in place. So I have to be very careful with it now, but it is a fun thing to just recount and just remember all the good times uh, re-watching and re-watching this episode, this episode, and then the next episode, Day of the Rose, and then the the episode after that spelled all in the four kids dub are just so nostalgic to me. And so I just have loved getting to recount these episodes and rewatch these episodes with, with you guys um, during the podcast. So buckle up for a great episode and um, it's going to be awesome. So this week, I actually contacted my local Hot Topic because there were um, hear tell rumors, if you will, um, <laughs> hearsay, hear tell. Um, my friend Ella actually messaged me. Um, she is a fellow American Winxer and was a former uh, staff member of mine for the Winx English Forum magazine that I was on years and years ago with her. She messaged me and was like, "Hey, Hot Topic, looks like they're um, dropping some new licensed merch um, in their stores soon." And so it's been kind of a slow trickle uh, across America. Um, but this weekend, I actually reached out to my local Hot Topic and was like, hey, you know, do you guys have the Winx Club shirts in yet? And they had one design in. And so this weekend, I went with my best friend to go scout out, you know, <laughs> what they had. So I actually was able to find just the, the one design. And it's just a white shirt with um, all six girls on the front and their Magic Winx transformation. And it was just really cool to see one, just to see Winx Club merch, new Winx Club merch on on a shelf in an American store in 2022. Like I never would have thought I would have ever seen any sort of Winx Club merchandise on the shelf in an American store ever again. So to see that was very special and like, I don't know, it's just really cool. So um, for those of you that don't know, Hot Topic is like a, you know, fandom novelties type store and it's got, you know, anything you think of, it's got, you know, like Sailor Moon, Naruto, um, it's got Animal Crossing, it's got, um, you know, band shirts, video games, K-pop, you know, things like that. So very, very, you know, like fandom centralized licensed items and um, they have a ton of graphic t-shirts. And so there is another design that has been floating around online um, that is like a tie-dye shirt and it has all the girls sitting kind of like in the Bershka top pose but are all actually like, you know, placed um, correctly and <laughs> Techno's like not sticking out like sore thumb like on the Bershka top. But it was really cool um, to find those online and hopefully soon that they will be in my local Hot Topic store as well. So yeah, so that's just a little update, little fun thing that I did over the weekend. So without further ado, let's just get into um, the the episode we are discussing this week, which is season one, episode seven. In the right English version, it is called Friends in Need. In the four kids version, it is called Grounded. And then in the Italian version, it translates to What Are Friends For? The synopsis reads, Alfea's headmistress punishes the fairies after having visited Cloud Tower and depriving them temporarily of their powers. The witches arrive at Alfia College, evoking a monster to destroy it. Helped by the specialist, the Winks defeat the monster. Um, okay, cool. Well, that's a, you know, pretty, pretty okay synopsis. Thanks, Winx Wiki, for that synopsis. Um, so getting into this episode, um, basically, I mean, there are some, you know, like, 
minor, minor differences in, you know, the sequence of scenes uh, when it comes to the four kids dub versus the right English dub. So I probably won't be focusing too much on the differences this episode um, as far as like the sequences of scenes because they are all, like I said, pretty much the same. So the episode opens up with all the Winx girls in Griselda's office talking about how long, you know, they can expect to be punished um, for for what they did, um, you know, sneaking out to go to Cloud Tower to steal Stell's ring back. But Griselda informs them that, you know, this is only the beginning of their punishment. And so um, so she actually assigns them the, the tour of having to clean all of the school, like the entire school, you know, and <laughs> I, I love it because um, at first Griselda's like, you know, you guys have to, you know, stay at the school, you know, all weekend. And Stella's like, that's not really a punishment, you know? And then Griselda's like, oh, you want to play that game? All right, cool. Um, bet. <laughs> so they, um, they get, they get assigned to clean the whole school without their powers, obviously. And for, you know, for Bloom, that's kind of like, she kind of alluded to this in the right English version in the previous episode. And um, when she said, you know, like we, we have to, you know, do all this stuff without our powers. Like I'm used to it, you know, being from earth and all, but like you guys, uh, you guys might struggle a little bit. <laughs> you know. Um, so I thought that that was, that was pretty um, funny. So the girls get to cleaning um, and it goes to Bloom and Musa and Stella in the lecture hall of Alfia and I love I love um these scenes because we get something that I really look out for and enjoy in the Wing Sculpt series is kind of like unique character pairings you know so we get Stella Bloom and, and Musa we don't see this combination of characters and in scenes by themselves a lot um and I and I love that about the scene. So Stella Bloom and Musa are, well, <laughs> Bloom and Musa are cleaning. Stella is sitting on a desk um, doing her nails. And it's it's very funny because, you know, they're like, it's not fair that, you, you know, we're having to pick up the slack for you, Stella. You're the one that got us into this mess. Um, I love in the four kids dub that <laughs> that Bloom's like, yeah, this is kind of your fault, you know, and Stella's like, um, this is my fault. <laughs> And Musa goes, well, if you hadn't opened your big yap trap, to which Stella responds, um, you both laughed, didn't you? Like, <laughs> you laughed at my joke. <laughs> um, so you couldn't be that angry. But uh, so after refusing to, you know, kind of help them clean, Bloom decides to take actions into her own hands and fills a bucket up of soupy water and splashes it onto Stella. And of course, Musa is left just rolling because, you know, she thinks that Stella got exactly what she was deserved um, and what was asking for. But then, of course, Bloom turns it back on Musa and gives her a piece of the action as well, which is hilarious. And I just, it's such a good, fun, lighthearted scene. Something to note in the four kids dub is I've mentioned this before in the podcast, but um, Musa in the four kids dub in, and especially in the first season, it is alluded to that she is a princess. She's a princess of the Harmonic Nebula, which is, you know, a totally incorrect, you know, name as far as canon goes in the Winx Club universe. But I digress, but definitely in the four kids dub in this scene, <laughs> Musa s mentions to Stella that like, you are not the only princess here. Like I am also a princess. I am cleaning. You can do the same, you know, and, and Stella responds like, well, maybe, but like on Solaria royalty and suds don't mix. And that's when, you know, Bloom splashes her with the soapy water, which is just so ironic and hilarious. And it's a great scene. It's a great sequence of scenes um, in both dubs. Meanwhile, um, and this is another kind of, you know, odd character pairing or unique character pairing that I love. Um, Flora and Tecna are off in the like main hall cleaning, uh, you know, like when you theoretically like when you go into Alfia and it's the main hall with the big staircase and the like beautiful like stained glass windows in the back that is where Flora and Tecna are and Flora is literally having to like coach Tecna through having to use such quote-unquote primitive technology <laughs> 
a broom and, you know, a bucket. So Tecna places the bucket on her head um, and she's like, what? (laughs) But Tecna places the bucket on her head and the Megan's uh, like dusting with the broom um, on a a large painting like above her head and eventually like knocks it down, breaks it. And she's like, well, good thing I figured out how to use the bucket and the four kids dub, which I thought was so clever and like witty as is all four kids dialogue, which shout out for kids dialogue. Um, I will say it forever. It's the best, (laughs) but the girls um, meet up with everyone in the main hall where Stella and Bloom and Musa just had a huge water fight um, with the soapy water buckets and Flora and Tecna come in and they're like, what on earth happened here? Like, what if Griselda comes in and sees this? To which Griselda does. And (laughs) Griselda informs them that they have to stay at school and continue to clean um, while the rest of the school goes to a concert in Magic's. I love the sassiness from Four Kids Griselda when she's like, I wanted to let you know that Charmed Life is playing Magic Stadium tomorrow night and all of Althea will be there. Do you know this group? I've got all their CDs. Good thing, because since you have so much cleaning left, you won't be attending the show. Perhaps one of your classmates will pick you up a T-shirt. And um, Stella's like, I have all their CDs. Ah, Girl, like talk about a like a dated moment like when was the last time you bought a cd like there are probably people that listen to this podcast that have never even like owned a cd which is mind-blowing to me i don't even what (laughs) so stella's like i have all their cds and griselda (laughs) mentions um that's a good thing because uh since they have so much cleaning left that they won't be attending the show. And then she says, maybe one of your classmates can pick you up a t-shirt. Oh my God, the shade, the absolute sarcasm snarkiness that Griselda gives here, the delivery. It's, it is chef's kiss, amazing. (laughs) But we see all of the teachers and all of the students at Alfia loading up into the buses and going off to Magic Stadium to this concert, leaving the winks behind to clean. Um, And this is when they get the idea, hey, we should call up the Red Fountain specialists and help us with the cleaning. And then we can have a party after. Because, you know, yeah, classic. This is some kind of trope. I'm sure this is some kind of trope in, you know, some way. (laughs) But they ultimately decide that, yeah, like Griselda didn't say that we can't ask for help, you know, from from the specialists. So yeah, let's definitely give them a call. Yeah, sure. So they formulate this plan um, to invite all of the Red Fountain Specialists, which is so hilarious. Meanwhile, at Cloud Tower, um, after the tricks have discovered that the Winx obviously broke into their school, um, they were furious and they want revenge. They are, you know, like causing kind of a scene at their dinner table um, at Cloud Tower in the main, you know, I guess like mess hall (laughs) of Cloud Tower, which is funny because it's not like a hall. It's like a tower or spire, I guess, in Cloud Tower. And basically all of Cloud Tower can like... (laughs) hear this because they're not exactly being discreet about their plans but Myrta which is this little witch that um that stands up to them because she is she's just this little freshman witch at Cloud Tower and she stood up to them saying that you know there's no need to be a you know against the fairies of Althea and that um they should all try to get along you know very very wholesome moment from from our girl Myrta but then of course you know the tricks absolutely mock her And all of Cloud Tower starts to laugh at her um, as they begin to, you know, like make fun of her. Darcy conjures up um, in the four kids dub, she calls it a goo blob, which was, I guess, like just just like a practical joke, you know, that witches might play on one another. (laughs) Who knows? But she it like kind of engulfs Myrta's head and she like. And is trying to get it off and and Lucy and the four kids dub is like, she is not funny. She can't breathe. And then like Darcy, like, you know, makes the the blob dissolve and she's like, it, you know, it wasn't going to kill her. Like, it's just going to scare her or whatever, which this, this whole scene, it really, really, really shows how ruthless the tricks can be. And 
It also introduces us to our girl Myrta and Lucy. So I love this introduction of Myrta, like her standing up to the bullies of Cloud Tower and then, you know, in turn getting bullied. It's just, it just really shows us who Myrta is, who Lucy is. It, it gives us, you know, a great look at how absolutely, you know, like low down the tricks are. Like they are mean. They think that harming other people is hilarious. And so, yeah, that's just a great sequence to really show off the character's dynamics. But after Griffin comes in and in the Rye English version, she's just telling, you know, the the <laughs> this is so funny. She's just telling, you know, like the the mess hall, the food hall of of Cloud Tower to like calm down, you know, like and and finish your dinner and go to bed. But in the four kids version, I love that she had an announcement to make about um how the princesses of Alfia um has booked Magic Stadium tomorrow night for a music concert. So she says that um, because they've booked Magic Stadium for this wretched music concert, that their money for Monsters fundraiser has to move to the uh, elementary school auditorium, which, you know, this is very, a very, like, um, very normal thing to happen in, like, an American city. Um, Like, events will get rented out, you know, We'll rent out spaces in like, you know, an auditorium of a high school or, you know, whatever, um, or, you know, even an elementary school, apparently. But it's just funny to see that, like, that dynamic of like, oh, you know, the fairies, you know, have foiled us again. You know, we have to go to this lower venue now to to have our fundraiser and then this is when i see you know hatches her plan of like you know tomorrow night's our night you know we can destroy althea and also search for the dragon fire while we are there um, while everyone has left for the concert it's just so good so good so the guys show up to althea and <laughs> um the the dialogue here is is pretty much the same between the dubs but one of the things that is, is really funny is the dialogue between the girls and the guys. You know, it, it does change slightly. It is just like, you know, better delivered <laughs> in the four kids dub. But something funny. Um, so the guys all, you know, show up. The girls meet them in, in the Alfia courtyard. And I noticed that Sky's dog or Brandon, Brandon with blonde hair, Brandon with blonde hair's dog, Lady, right? We know Lady, um, you know, Lady is uh, Sky's dog, whatever. We saw her in the, in episode five, Date with Disaster. She obviously was at Red Fountain with, with Brandon, but, but for some reason, he decided to bring Lady with him to Althea, right? So we see Lady, you know, riding with Brandon with blonde hair, um, on his on his wind rider, but but then we see her, you know, in the grand hall of Althea as they're cleaning. But then we never see her again in this episode. Like, where, d- Brandon? What did you do with your dog? Like, where did she go? <laughs> so I just thought that that was a very funny like continuity thing, and it wasn't even like a like differences between dubs thing. It was just like she was there, and then yeah, she wasn't. So <laughs> I thought that that was very funny. You're listening to the Links Forever Podcast. But the guys show up and um, in the four kids dub, Brandon's like, so what kind of heroics and bravery did you girls need? Oh, like very saucy, you know, whatever. And then it cuts to them in the grand hall and Amus is like showing them like what they're actually there to do first is to clean, help them clean all of Althea. And Riven makes the snarky comment in the four kids dub like, we skipped a concert for this. <laughs> And and I love it. It's it's so funny. But all the guys are are you know kind of like on board with it, except for Riven. Obviously, he's a broody little boy and doesn't catch the mop that Bloom throws to him and lets it just kind of fall on the floor. And then they go into this fun little like you know like uh, sequence of they are cleaning the school and in the four kids dub it's like a little like dance sequence you know and like very cute, um, very uh, fun loving and and. Uh, 
lighthearted. You know, it's this montage of them cleaning and there's a song behind it and I love it. It's very cute. So after the specialist and the fairies all clean up, they go back to their dorm and they throw a little party. Um, the girls all changed into like these cute party outfits. Musa is DJing. Um, they've got snacks. They've got refreshments. You know, it's very cute. I absolutely, absolutely love the early 2000s fashion absolutely represented here. Like it's so well done. I mean, all the girls have such great outfits for this scene. It's it's just so good. Like Musa's, Musa with her, um, you know, cute little arm warmers, um, Stella with her obnoxiously big belt on her cami, you know, top. And then, um, Bloom, of course, with her cute little like leg warmers, like everything about it is just so early 2000s fashion. We stan. I love it. And but my my favorite look out of all of the Winx girls in in their party outfits in season one is definitely Flora, like girl eight, like, excuse me, she, like I'm talking like three course meal eight. She is fine. I love, love, love this outfit on her. It's like this cute floral cami and then her pants and the little wrap around her waist is just so great. I love it. It's so good. But while the winks and the specialist are enjoying themselves at their party, uh, the tricks teleport themselves to Althea, but we're very surprised to see that there were actually people at Althea. And so the tricks realize that oh, it's the Winx. What are they doing here? What the heck? So they decide that they can, you know, still safely search for the the dragon fire power with the vacuums that they conjure up um, because I see, you know, senses that energy that they've been looking for at Althea. So um, they, they get into Althea, they have the vacuums conjured, and they decide to, in order to deal with the winks and and the specialist to keep them distracted that they would summon a creature minotaur from limbo and and the four kids dub is is the little detail that that darcy sprinkles in there so they conjure up this minotaur to distract them and the creature minotaur disrupts the party and just goes on an absolute rampage uh, you know across alfia so the winks are partying obviously and they hear just this absolute commotion outside so they all go out to the balcony to see what the commotion is outside and they see something get thrown out of a window and just, you know, shatter the window. Something, you know, is, is destroying Althea. They're like, they've, they've got to go, you know, figure out what it is. So Riven um, calls up the, the wind riders to the balcony. <laughs> when I tell you <laughs> that this early 2000s CGI was not it. Like it was not it. At the time it was it. But like looking back, you're like, oh, you know, A for effort, but that is rough. Like I loved the chances and, and the creativity that this show, you know, brought to the animation space. Like they mixed, you know, hand drawn with CGI in this series so well before it was really even being done anywhere else. So, you know, props to them on that. But man, this scene was so rough. <laughs> so they um, they hopped on their, their wind riders, um, you know, rode them down to where the, the commotion was going on outside. And then the Lynx, of course, had to go on foot because they can't exactly fly right now. So they all um, meet them down there and they're inspecting this huge just rubble of, you know, a section of Alfie of... of something big has, you know, broken into Alfia. And and Techno obviously points this out, checking out the markings on the wall and stuff. And I love how sassy, I love how sassy Techna is here. In both dubs, like in both dubs, Techna delivers like just such a zinger to Riven because she's like, yeah, like this was caused by some kind of large creature. And Riven being the absolute you know jerk that he is it's like wow tell us something we don't know and then Tecna being the absolute badass boss bitch that she is just <laughs> she just rattles off all these other facts about this creature that she was able to pick up just from inspecting the area 
and like just absolutely just hands it to Riven, you know, just like, you know, here you go, you know, try me again, you know, like (laughs) it's just absolutely amazing and I love it. So the guys go to inspect and the girls are like, well, we'll come too. And Riven's like, no, don't come. You'll just get in the way. And then Musa's like, whatever that's ridiculous and so they go and they are inspecting you know Althea they're kind of like you know looking around all of Althea trying to find what on earth you know could this have been while they're doing this the tricks obviously are are looking for the dragon fire and it they keep saying like you know this power keeps moving that the the vacuums are picking up like where, like, what, where is it? What is happening? And it's because Bloom, obviously, is, like, moving around. Spoiler alert, is moving around. And and um, they're basically chasing the winks at this point. So they are, you know, like, kind of in this dark, like, hallway of Althea when Musa 100% bumps into the rear end of this creature minotaur. Uh, first of all, oh, y- yikes. <laughs> Second, um, it, it's funny in the four kids dub, um, you know, they're creeping along, being quiet, you know, trying to listen for whatever it could be in Althea when Misa's like, did you hear that? And then Stella goes, I didn't hear a thing. And then Tecna says, if you had sonar ears like Musa, you would. And I don't know if this is like another zinger from Tecna, you know, like very sarcastic, but it could also be like Tecna saying like Musa's got a good ear. She, you know, obviously is the fairy of music. She, you know, she can hear things, you know, like a mile away, you know, like (laughs) kind of like the girl from Encanto, you know, like. (laughs) So they find the Minotaur, are absolutely shook, you know, like this is probably one of the largest creatures besides Um, the like gross goo monster they encountered in Cloud Tower that they've faced yet. And so it's huge, it's destructive, it's angry. Um, And it starts to attack the girls, you know, it starts to run after them. They're running, they're running. I love (laughs) that they're running up these stairs. And then the second person out like up from the stairs is Flora, but she straight up trips and falls. And then like three of the three other girls run past her before Stella is like, come on, get up, like I'll help you. (laughs) Like, girl, y'all really just said, oh, screw Flora, like she's Minotaur food, like, <laughs> excuse me. So um, the Minotaur actually um, does corner Tecna, and, but Tecna um, does some kind of uh, maneuver to get herself out of the way of the Minotaur before it kind of like reared its um, horns and his horns get stuck in the wall when Stella, of course, of course, Stella has to do something. Stella comes over and is like, wow, this thing really stinks. Um, And she pulls out a bottle of perfume, just like a whole, a bottle of perfume and is like, here, this should help. Stella, what girl, girl, level with me here. How on earth was this going to help? (laughs) What were you thinking? If anything, it does the exact opposite. Makes the Minotaur so mad and angry. um, Gets his horns unstuck from the wall and continues to chase the girls. So the girls are running, 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 running. And um, it finally, you know, creeps onto Musa, who is obviously not running fast enough. And so Musa jumps, does this really cool, like, acrobatic, like, I mean, girl is sporty. Like, (laughs) she, like, parkours off of the wall and then, like, does a flip and then, like, pushes the minotaur down. And the Rye English, and this is so interesting to me, in the Rye English dub, Um, And I guess all the other, you know, dubs, it's not the four kids dub. When Musa, you know, like pushes the Minotaur down, she goes flying and is caught by none other than Riven. I didn't realize this. I didn't realize that this was taken out of the four kids dub because he like catches her and then um, sets her down. And then the girl, the, then she's standing there and the guys walk past her in the four kids dub. And I kind of like it better in the four kids dub because it shows Musa not as this like little damsel that needs to be like, you know, caught by the guy that she has a crush on, but really it shows her being just a badass 
and, you know, like without her powers, like pushing this minotaur, you know, down and like landing on her feet because she is hella, you know, um, athletic and agile. <laughs> and, uh, um, and, and then in the four kids dub, you know, Brandon, the blonde hair says, you know, like great job, Musa, you know, like way to go. Like that, that was amazing. Um, so I, I love that. I love that that was something that the four kids dub decided to leave out and that it kind of gave Musa that very heroic moment and not, not Riven, you know, it didn't give Riven that power. Um, but then Riven, of course, you know, is like, Hey, you know, like, come, you know, if you want a real challenge, come over here. Um, which like (laughs) rude, but you know, of course, like big Riven fashion, he, um, he gets his butt handed to him quite a lot, quite a lot, which is hilarious because I feel like, you know, that is something that fate, the Wink saga got correct is that, you know, Riven, talks a huge game and then whenever he does like you know talk a huge game he just gets his butt handed to him left and right (laughs) so you know he's he's running after the minotaur to go fight him and brandon and sky and timmy are like well you know wait for us and riven makes the snarky comment like he always does you know if we had a dollar every time riven made some kind of snarky ass comment it would it would we would have a lot of dollars i'm just saying um but riven makes a snarky comment about um you know just just stick to your prince squire boy you know to to brandon with blonde hair to and then of course you know in true riven fashion he gets absolutely conked absolutely conked by the minotaur just clocked right in the jaw and then this sends him flying through the window uh into the next hallway just and he just like passes out he's just like freaking passed out there no one no one goes and checks on him he just kind of like you know (laughs) but um the tricks find him actually and darcy is like wow i sense a very strong dark energy coming from this guy like you know and in the rye english dub she's like it is you know almost as powerful or if not more powerful than the prince of darkness himself and we're like um excuse me darcy (laughs) did you just say that riven had as has as much dark energy as the prince of darkness like are you saying that riven riven has as much dark energy as are you i mean is she referencing like lucifer like the devil like you know like who are we talking about here because yikes that is not something to take lighthearted you know that's that's a serious accusation it's icy is like you know hmm, like take note of that that's really good to know uh we could we could have use for him in the future that's yeah we'll we'll put a pin in it you know (laughs) and i love that because it is kind of like a um you know, that's a foreshadow for the next couple of episodes. Ooh, spoiler alert. It's it's great. I love it. So while the guys are trying to deal with this minotaur, right? Um, Floor is like, they're getting bubbled to a pulp. We need to, like, we need to do something. And they're like, yo, we can't do anything without our powers. Like, so we're kind of just like helpless. And then Stella, Stella of all people, which this is, this is why I love Stella, right? She acts like this helpless little princess, you know, pampered, whatever. Like, you know, she wouldn't touch the, you know, the mops and brooms and, and buckets and soap or anything when they were cleaning the school, which, you know, she kind of got over when the guys got there and they were all cleaning together. But, um, you know, she, she got over all of that and actually came up with the idea to use their cleaning supplies to first get the monster's attention and then make the monster slip on the spilled like cleaning fluid. And so, and, and it works. And that's the crazy part. I was like, you know, like what blooms, probably in the corner like gosh why didn't I think of that you know like (laughs) um but they they make the the monster chase after them they you know make the monster slip and fall uh down an entire tower hello and it 
knocks himself out, obviously. And as as the the crew's inspecting, you know, this this minotaur, you know, as it's passed out on the floor, they're like, what where could this have come from? You know, in the in the four kids dub, Riven's like, could it have been the creature preserve? And Bloom's like, the creature preserve doesn't have any minotaurs. Like, that's impossible. And then just, you know, right on cue, the little purple duck that we love so much named Pepe um, comes out and and Bloom's like, oh, Pepe, that's Icy's duck. Like, first of all, first of all, Bloom, 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 Bloom. When did we decide collectively to name this duck Pepe? Like, I want to know. I want to know when we decided. I, was this a group decision? Was this a you decision? Are you trying to make it catch on? Is this like fetch? You know, like what what is happening? But we know we we now know that his name is Pepe. We in the four kids dub he doesn't get a name. Um, his name is just Icy's Duck. <laughs> so that of course leads them to believe that the tricks must be at Alfia, and so they decided to break into Miss Farragonda's office to um, inspect her all seeing crystal ball of Alfia. Um, because it's, I guess, kind of like a security camera, kind of like what Griffin has, um, in, in Cloud Tower, you know, what she used to detect that the Winx had broken into Cloud Tower. So they were going to go access Farragondas to see what the heck was going on, you know? And so they decide to all hide in Farragonda's office when they hear that the tricks were coming up on them. And (laughs) when they all ambush them, right, Farragonda shows up. Classic, classic. Farangana shows up. She's like, up until a while ago, I thought that this was my office. What are you all doing in here? You know, it, it's very, it's very cool. Farragonda is such a great headmistress. She's so chill at times, but I love that she can also be a hard ass at times. You know, like she's, she's such a good combination of all of those. Farragonda says, you know, as the guys are saying their goodbyes to the Winks, that um, she, she says to Griselda to remind her to send a, a letter of gratitude to Saladin, the headmaster of Red Fountain, for the help his students gave. Um, and then she turns to the tricks and scolds them for their inappropriate behavior and sends them back to Cloud Tower um, with a letter of complaint to the Cloud Tower headmistress. Um, so yeah, so like everyone's kind of like getting in trouble except for the winks. Cause apparently, you know, like they, they did, they, 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 they did good this episode. You know, they didn't use their powers. Obviously they couldn't, but also, um, uh, the next day Farragonda gives the winks back their powers. And then the, the episode ends kind of with this very introspective moment of Farragonda in her office, you know, in the right English dub, she is talking kind of about the fairies, about the Winx Club saying, you know, you guys have a long journey ahead of you. You know, this is, this is only the beginning, you know, kind of like, kind of like, you know, this, this is only the beginning. You're only beginning your journey to, to full fairy, fairyhood, (laughs) fairyhood. (laughs) I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We're rolling with it. Fairyhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But then in the four kids dub, um, Farragonda actually is kind of being introspective about, you know, why the tricks were here. She, she was talking about how they were looking for the dragon fire, but she's like, I thought that that was just a myth. And then talking about how um, the the trick said that it was in this very room, but she knows that it's not at Alfia. And so she's like, who's got it? Like, why is it here and who who has got it? You know, um, I think this is when Farragon is like starting to put the pieces together of like, you know, like it could be, you know, because, you know, the last episode, Bloom's bringing up all this stuff about the great dragon. And then all of a sudden... The tricks come in and they're like, yo, we're looking out for this dragon fire power, dude. Like, <laughs> you know, like it, it's, it's beginning to click, you know, so um, really cool. Really awesome. <sighs> wow. So that was a lot. Um, I'm going to take a break. Um, but when we come back, we're going to look at the major events of this episode, um, as well as some fun facts and the Winx Forever moment. So stay tuned. Enjoying Winks Forever podcast? Be sure to follow the show on your favorite streaming platform so that you're notified when new episodes are released. All 
All right, so looking back um, on this episode and some of the major events that happen, um, obviously major events, Winks throw a party while the rest of their classmates attend a concert. Myrta and Lucy appear for the first time ever. Um, that Darcy is attracted to the darkness in Riven's heart. <gasps> Ooh. And, and that, like I said, is kind of a, um, a foreshadow for the next two episodes, which is exciting. Farragonda references Saladin, the headmaster of Red Fountain, um, which that's the first time I believe that that he is mentioned in the series. And then the tricks return to Cloud Tower and headmistress Griffin um, will receive a formal complaint uh, for their behavior from Farragonda. So then, of course, you know, the Winks have their powers returned. Um, another major event, and, you know, this can be as major as whatever you want to believe, but um, Brandon, well, Sky with brown hair, Sky with brown hair gives Stella a kiss on the cheek for the first time. And it's just so romantic and cute. It's, 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 a lot better delivered, of course, in the four kids dub because in, in the rye English dub is he's just like, come here. And it's like, ew, no. Um, in the four kids dub, though, he's like, mm, bye, you know, like uh, dreamy. Um, rye English dub, not so much. <laughs> um, some other fun facts. Uh, scenes from this episode um, were used for you know, one of the Nickelodeon specials, you know, in this episode also, it shows how little common sense that Techna kind of has about, you know, certain things when it comes to, you know, things that are unrelated to science or technology, um, like the broom and, and the bucket. But then I love that it shows her, you know, kind of like clueless about those. But then later on in the episode, when, um, when she is telling Riven off, you know, about, this this monster that she identified just by some claw marks on the wall like iconic iconic we stan a brainy queen we love her also this is the first time that the winks lose their powers in the you know winks club franchise um not to say that it won't happen again um because it might uh spoiler alert it, it might at least to one of them um, but yeah, so that happens. This is the second episode in, um, all of, you know, Winx Club, uh, season one that nobody transforms in this episode. There is not one transformation of any of the Winx girls in this episode. Um, the first one obviously was the Black Mud Swamp episode. So very, very funny. Like I said about the uh, cleaning sequence um, after the guys uh, get to Alfia, um, four kids did cut out the dumb song that the specialist and the Winx sang together from the Rye English dub, I, uh, which I hated. I hated that. Um, but the song that replaced it in the four kids dub was the four kids original soundtrack song um, called This Is The Beat, which... Is, it's a great, it's a great, it's a bop. I mean, I love it. So that does it for some fun facts and um, and major events that happen in this episode. But at the end of all of these rewatch episodes, we are determining what is the quintessential Winx-tastic moment of the episode that we are calling the Winx forever moment, you know? So for me, man, this episode is so nostalgic for me. It's really hard, you know, because like all of it, all of it feels very winks to me, even though they don't ever transform, they don't use magic at all. But I think that the most winks tastic like moment is their little dance, their little like party in the um in the loft in the winks, you know, in the winks dorm. Like it's so I love it. It's it's the guys and the girls interacting. You're seeing kind of these relationships you know, growing even further from the last time that we saw them all together. And and, it, and I love it. Like, it's so, uh, it's so great. Probably a backup moment for me would be, of course, them figuring out a way to defeat the Minotaur without their powers. That was a great moment as well. Man, it is hard to talk about some of these things by myself. <laughs> For some episodes, but I did it. And here we are. We're at the end. Well, I hope that you guys um, enjoyed this episode because uh, like I said, it's always a treat getting to rewatch some of your favorite 
um, episodes, and this for sure is one of mine. Um, it's 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 iconic. It's classic, classic Winks. You know, even though no one transforms, even though they don't use powers, it is classic Winks to me. Tune in next week. We have a very special guest, uh, my friend and fellow American Winxer, Dane. He will be joining me to go over the Day of the Rose episode. And it is such a good episode. Talk about, I mean, gosh, talk about iconic Winx episodes. This one has got to be up there in the top 10. Um, So yeah, please join us for that conversation. It will be so, so fun. So you won't want to miss it. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to follow or subscribe on your preferred streaming platform to be notified when new episodes release of the Winx Forever podcast. Um, Also, if you don't mind, if you are enjoying the show, I mean, I would love, love, love to hear your thoughts on the show. Um, You can leave me a review on um, Apple Podcasts and also you can rate the show on Spotify now. So that's a fun little fun little thing um that is you can now do so yeah so let me know what you think of the show um rate it and comment on it on um apple podcast and rate it on spotify as well the theme for winx forever podcast is the song she makes magic by big wild <laughs>